Hi, I'm Alex and this is Tank Tested. Today, George Farmer is giving us a step-by-step -step guide into how to set up an aquascape. Before we get to George, I want to give you a little bit of background. See, George was doing a live aquascaping demo and he asked me to film it. The video you're about to watch is a 15 minute cut down of that lecture. In the description, there's also a link to an article I wrote for tanktested.org that outlines all of the materials George used in this demo. Finally, if you're not already familiar with George Farmer, go check out his YouTube channel. It has almost 400 really professional videos on aquascaping. Now, here's George to give you a demo. So, my name is George Farmer. I am a full-time aquascaper. And um, when I say full-time, I mean, like, literally, it's like relentless, but it's brilliant. It's my absolute passion. And I'm very fortunate to make a, a living doing what I absolutely love. Good, let's get started. So this is uh, the first time this tank has been in the US. It's a rimless aquarium. Uh, I really love rimless aquariums. They're perfect for aquascaping because uh, we can see into the aquarium. Um, so it offers, a, it offers a new kind of dimension. It also allows uh, things to come out of the aquarium. So uh, wood, plants, a lot of plants like to grow emergent, so they grow out of the water. And it makes maintenance really easy. I really like to um, do kind of on the spot maintenance sometimes. If I walk past my aquarium at home and I see something's a little bit amiss, you know, a leaf needs removing, you can just get your hand in there and just whip it out. Whereas if you've got a hood, you know, you're more or less likely to be inclined to do anything like that. So my first step is to install the substrate. This is a soil substrate. It doesn't need rinsing. And this is just really great for the plants and actually great for the whole aquarium system. It, it helps to reduce the pH of the water. It, it actually buffers it around about 6.5, which is ideal for most fish and plants. It also contains nutrients, which helps to feed the plant roots. If you want to get into aquascaping, then I would I would recommend using a soil product. I have used this for for many well not many years. It hasn't been out many years, but um, when it first was released, I've been using it, and it's uh, is a proven performer. So we're using three bags. That's going to be 27 liters. So now what I'm doing is just flattening the the soil uh, out, and then I'll have a slightly shallower depth of soil at the front. It's worth taking your time doing this because once it's full of water, you're just going to create a massive mess if you want to level it out afterwards. So do spend a little bit of time doing this. So now we're talking about the hardscape. The hardscape is the backbone of the layout. Now, if any of you have watched my content, you know I always talk about hardscape and how important it is. If you start off with a strong hardscape, it's very likely you're going to, you're going to create a, a good aquascape. If you have a weak hardscape, you're going to have to solely rely on the plants for the impact and that, and that can be quite challenging. We're all just trying to create something that looks as natural as possible and the, the style of aquarium that we're going to create today is called the nature aquarium style and you're using natural materials, live plants uh, in conjunction to create a slice of nature in, in, in the aquarium and you're not necessarily copying nature, you're not uh, directly transforming a landscape scene into the tank um, but we're using an essence of nature, um, the feeling of nature and natural materials to create this, this natural impression. So when we're positioning our hardscape, we, we need to think about focal points. The focal point is where your eyes are naturally drawn to. So uh, a very easy uh, guide I like to use is the rule of thirds. Some of you may have heard of it already. I'm kind of using the rule of thirds here. This is like the most kind of dominant piece of wood at the moment. I will probably have a little bit of a rearrange in a minute. Um, but this is quite dominant and this is about a third of the way in. So that's kind of okay. The same with this one. And then we've got this one here. So let's try that for starters. <laughs> okay. Although they look like different types of wood, they are the same. They're just different sizes, different kind of textures, which I think works really well together. Good, I'm happy with that so far. Next step is to install our rocks. It's called Dragonstone. It's almost like a um, really, really dense clay. 
So we start off with our biggest stone, and then we're thinking about composition again, where is it going to be situated in the aquarium to create the best kind of naturalistic aesthetic balance. So working our way down in size again, we tend to use odd numbers with rocks. If we, if we had a, another rock there and another rock there, it would look too symmetrical. And then again, your eyes would be darting left and right and wouldn't settle down. So we'll probably just go for the three, three rocks. Okay, I think that looks okay. Yes, happy. Plants, plants are epic. Plants are absolutely fantastic for your aquarium. They're arguably a better filter than your filter. Um, they, they, they provide oxygen for the fish and the bacteria and the shrimp. They provide shelter and security. Uh, they help fight off algae. And they just provide so many benefits for the aquarium system. The more plants you have, the better. Okay? If you think about the, the aquarium as a war zone between um, plants and algae, the more plants you have, the healthier they are, they are the better you look after them, uh, the, the better they're maintained, uh, the less likely you'll get algae. I just want to show you how I prepare a plant because some of you may not know already. So to prepare our pots, simply remove your plastic pot like so. And normally the rock wool comes in two distinct halves. So you just peel it apart like so. Take out the plants if you can. And there we have our plant. Now that, those roots are quite long. Now what you can do, you can trim them off with scissors. I just like to tear them. And that's good for two reasons. It makes the planting much easier and it also stimulates new root growth, which is a good thing. Now what we can do, we can separate the plant into individual stems if we like, or we can keep them in kind of loose bunches like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate it like that, that's fine. So we followed that exact same process for all of these other plants. I'm gonna plant the foreground first. I always plant the foreground, then I go mid-ground, then I go background. The reason for that is normally your background Generally speaking, you'll have taller plants and they tend to kind of flop around a bit and then it'll be really hard to plant in, in the foreground there. So start off with the foreground and then work your way back. Um, I, I always like to plant dry. So why, the reason for that is, if you imagine I fill the aquarium with water right now and I started planting, it's just going to create a mess. It's going to look awful. You're not going to see what I'm doing because it's going to turn into a muddy, sludgy soup. Um, what I used to do was actually uh, just fill the aquarium with water up to here and then plant. But recently, in the last couple of months or so, I plant dry and I find I get less floaters. So what can happen when you do fill the aquarium with water, the, the, the plant can come loose. Now what I like to do as well when I'm planting, so let's just show you how to do that. So grab your plant and your tweezers, gently push in, and then what you can do is just hold it there, take your tweezers out, and then that's gonna be there nice and secure. Now what I like to do is do one end, do one the other, do one in the middle and then half it each time and then you get kind of guaranteed even coverage. This is Liliopsis brasiliensis. Uh, it's an easy carpeting plant. Um, it will benefit from CO2 ejection, like all plants will. Um, but eventually, it's a slow grower, it's, it's like I said, it's easy as well. But eventually it will send out runners and then it will pop up new, new leaves and this will form like a really nice lawn, like a really nice solid carpet, hopefully. Good, so we'll work to our mid-ground now. So, let's talk about one of my favourite plants of all time, Beckettii Pecci. And the great thing about crypts for me is that they're really, they're really slow growing, generally speaking very tolerant of low levels of light, they'll grow in shade and they're very sustainable. They tend not to send out too many runners, they tend to stay where they are and they just produce new leaves and you'll just get a kind of denser and denser kind of effect. So Crips, perfect mid-ground plant, it will get a little bit taller than this uh, but super low maintenance, super, super easy. They do like a nutrient-rich substrate 
I'm not going to lie to you, it's not cheap to, to plant an aquarium like this, uh, but what it will do, it's an investment and by investing in, the, in healthy plants and enough of these plants, it's going to really kind of limit your uh, risk of algae. We really need to focus our efforts on, on healthy plant growth. So start off with a really, really healthy plant. Strike up a relationship with your, with your store. Ask them when they get the next shipment of plants so they're super fresh from the nursery because that's, they're going to be at their most healthiest, the most likely to succeed and then the most likely to fight off the potential algae. Algae. Everyone says algae, don't they? Over here. Yeah. Doesn't offend you if I say algae, does it? Tough. <laughs> Next, we're going to plant one of my favourite name plants, Hygrophila siamensis 53b. Great, rolls off the tongue. Um, it's called that because Tropica uh, had a, already had a Hygrophila siamensis and they discovered another one or they were given another one and they had to use the product code. So the product code is 53B. There you go. Nice bit of useless information for you. Um, it's a really, it's a fast growing weed. Um, it will quite rapidly fill the back of the aquarium, which will be a nice background effect. It's really important to plant with fast growers, especially in, the, uh, in a brand new aquarium. You know, we talked about the, uh, this, this war between the, the plants and the algae. Um, it's not just the health and the, the quantity of plants, it's also how fast they grow. And the faster the plant is growing, the less likely you're going to get algae. So I'm just going to split it up. You can, you can like, split it into individual stems if you wanted, but we'd be here all day. Okay, I prefer to use red plants sparingly. I find them quite high impact. And for me, uh, aquascaping, in particular nature aquarium style, is all about creating something that's um, natural and, and beautiful. And you do get red in nature, but you don't get loads of it in any one place usually. Maybe in the autumn, with certain trees, etc. Um, so for that reason, I, 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 I like to be quite careful of how I use my red. And so, Today, I'm just using it in the background here, just to create a little accent in the background. Very similar uh, in terms of how it's going to grow to the Hygrophila siamensis 53b. And very, very fast growing. Ludwigia, sorry, I didn't tell you what plant it was. Uh, Ludwigia repens rubin. Okay, next we're going to plant some Anubius. Anubius is named after the god of death. And so death, darkness, this will grow pretty much in the dark. It likes to be shaded. And if you do put a lot of light on it, it will tend to, it will tend to get algae. It's also an epiphyte plant. So that's a plant that needs to be attached to your wood or your rocks. So in nature, uh, these will be found literally growing in cracks in rocks or, or in wood. So same process as before with the Anubius. We're just inserting our ferns where the wood kind of crosses over. And then after a few, few weeks or so, that's going to self-attach. Self it's unfortunate the stems aren't a bit longer because we're kind of losing the background effect. But when, when, when this tank is filled with water, we're not doing it today. Um, just in a day or so, the plants are going to really upright themselves and it will really start to look like an aquascape, a proper aquascape. Okay, sometimes less is more, you don't have to plant all your plants. That is the aquascape complete. This is Alex again, but you can probably tell that based on the accent. I want to thank George for allowing me to film his process and remind you to go subscribe to George's YouTube channel. I also want to thank my first few supporters on Patreon. These videos take a lot of time to make and I so appreciate your support. If you'd like to be on my wall of thank yous, consider supporting me on Patreon.
But if Patreon isn't your style, consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell to get notified every time I upload a video. I hope you have a great day.